Kristen with Hooks, Books, and Wanderlust. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet the two blocks that comprise the Evren Baby Blanket, my latest crochet blanket pattern. While I'm only going to be showing you how to crochet just these two blocks, you can find the full written pattern for free on my blog as well as paid versions that can be found in both my Ravelry and Etsy shops. I will be sure to put all of those links in the description box below for you. Now I have four colors that I used for my blanket. Um, don't be limited or feel like you have to do the exact same, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to show this to you um, as if I were the yarn for this pattern was generously provided to me from Lion Brand Yarn, and I am using their Basic Stitch Worsted Weight Yarn, which I really love. Um, it's anti-pilling and so soft, and there's so many great colors. So I am excited to share that with you, but you do not have to use Basic Stitch. Um, you can use any comparable worsted weight yarn. Um, for this tutorial, I am going to use a little bit different than what I use in the pattern. Um, before I get rid of this, in the pattern I have my main color and then I have my three contrasting colors. And for the purpose of this video, I'm only going to show you um, a main color block and a contrasting color block, but I'm going to change my colors a little bit because um, the A crew is kind of hard to see, I think, in video on a white background. So um, I am going to use the hazelnut here as my main color block and I'll use the, oh, what's this one called? Silver Heather, which is the gray, as my contrasting color. So that way you guys should be able to see those colors a little bit better. Um, if you want to know though, the other colors here, we have deep denim Heather and I have a crew. So again, a crew is the main color in the written pattern with the deep denim, silver Heather and hazelnut being the contrasting colors. So let's get started. Okay, so we are ready to get started with our first block, which will be your main color block. And when you're just starting the blanket, you're going to start out with a foundation chain. Now I am, again, I'm using a different color for my main color for this uh, tutorial swatch. Um, the, if you're following along with the written pattern, I do use the Acru, um, but for this tutorial to help it show up better on the video, I'm using the hazelnut colorway. So I'm going to start by making a slip knot. And what I'm going to point out, you may have noticed I've got two different hook sizes here, is that while the body of this blanket is going to be worked with a five and a half millimeter eye hook, I always like to, and I always recommend, going up a millimeter hook size for your foundation chain because what I have found is that foundation chains tend to be tighter than the stitches of the rest of your work. And sometimes that can lead to the bottom of your work getting kind of pulled and it's not as wide as the rest of it. So I counteract that by using a larger hook size. Now my rule of thumb is one millimeter, um, but that's with my tension. So, you know, you can play around with that and see how that works for you. But, um, I definitely recommend using a bigger hook than what you're using for the rest of your work. So the other tip I'm going to say for a foundation chain, especially when you have a large number of foundation chains like you do for this blanket, our foundation chain is 122 chain stitches long. Um, I like to count out and chain by fives. So um, it's just a way I have of helping me keep track of where I am with my count. So I've got five here and then I'll adjust my grip and hold on to that fifth chain and then I'll do another five. And that way, if I lose count, you know, it's a little easier for me to figure out where I was. 
because sometimes I get off by just one stitch and that's pretty easy to go back to and figure out, oh, okay, I've got only four stitches so I'm not as far as I thought I was or what have you. Um, the other thing that I like to do is when you are making a long chain, sometimes if it, you do lose count, it's you hate to have to like start all the way over from scratch. So what I'll do is as I get those increments, if I get to 25, I'll place a stitch marker and that way I'll keep moving on from there. And then if I lose count, I know I can go back to that stitch marker and say, well, that's the 25th stitch and I don't have to start completely over. And I'll move that stitch marker as I get farther along in my chain so that again, you know, as I get to 50 or 75 or 100, then I know kind of where I'm at. And it's, it's been a huge time saver for me. So for this swatch, as I said, I'm not making the entire pattern for this tutorial. Um, I'm only working a foundation chain of 12 stitches, which I've got now. And I'm going to go ahead and switch my hook back to the five and a half millimeter hook that I plan to use for the rest of the project. So the first row is single crochet. So you are going to single crochet into the second chain from your hook. And then into each chain all the way across. Okay, we are placing our final single crochet for this first row and we are ready to move on to row two. So for row two, we are going to chain one and turn and half double crochet into the stitch at the base of that chain one and into every single crochet all the way across. Okay, and as we finish our half double crochet row for row two, we are ready to start row three, which is going to be worked into the third loop of our half double crochet. So we're gonna chain one and turn. And if you're unfamiliar with the third loop of a half double crochet, here you have the top V of your stitch. And if you look at the back of your half double crochets, you've got this extra loop here. That is what we call the third loop. So I am going to insert my hook underneath that third loop yarn over and pull up a loop and single crochet as normal. And I'm just going to continue doing that all the way across the row. I'm working into the last half double crochet here. That third loop might get a little tricky to find. It's on the, on the edge there, but make sure that you don't miss it. All right. And we are ready to do our next row. So for row four, we are going to chain one and turn. And we'll do another row of half double crochet. Now, before I start that, I just want you to note this beautiful ridge that appears because we've worked into that third loop of the half double crochet. So for rows four and five, we are going to continue um, with the half double and then another row of single crochet in the third loop. So I will repeat those two rows and meet you back here ready to start row six. Okay, so I have finished row five and I'm ready to start row six. Row six and seven are two rows that comprise the star stitch. So row six, we're gonna work the bottom half of it and row seven will work the top half. It starts a little differently. So let's go ahead and I've zoomed the camera in a little closer trying to show this to you a little better. Um, and I will do my best to explain this because it can be a little bit tricky. To start a star stitch row, you're going to chain three, turn your work. You can see those beautiful ridges from working into the third loop of our half double crochets. And to start the star, first star stitch of the row is always a little different than the rest of them. Um, so you have your chain three, you're going to insert your hook into the second chain and pull up a loop and then insert your hook into the third chain and pull up a loop. There. So that's second and third chains from your hook that is. 
And then the stitch here at the base of your chain three, you're going to insert your hook and pull up another loop. So at this point, you haven't really gone anywhere in the row um, because you've been working into these chain stitches. So you should have four loops on your hook and now you're going to do what I call advancing. So you're gonna start progressing across your work. You're gonna advance two stitches at a time. So you're going to pull up one loop in each of the next two stitches and that will leave you with six loops on your hook, okay? So at this point, you're going to yarn over and pull through all six loops on your hook for a very satisfying pull through. And then to close your star stitch, you are going to chain one. Now that chain one, as you can see, creates this, this kind of circular space right here. We call that the eye of the star stitch. And each loop that was pulled up from each of those locations is what we call a leg. So you're going to be working into the side of this first star stitch to create the next one. So first insert your hook into the eye and pull up a loop. Then insert your hook under that last leg, straight into the, like the between in between the fifth and sixth legs there. And then at the stitch at the base of that last leg, pull up another loop. So now you'll have four loops on your hook. And again, we haven't really gone anywhere yet. So now we are going to advance two stitches. So we're gonna pull up a loop in each of the next two stitches, one and two, for a total of six uh, loops on our hook. So then as before, we will yarn over and pull through all six loops on our hook and chain one to close. Now each subsequent star stitch across the row is going to look like this one. Um, and you will end with that last star stitch in the last two stitches of your row. But we have one last thing to do to close off the row which is to work a half star stitch. So I'll show you that here in just a second. So let's go ahead and finish our star stitch row. So again, we're gonna pull a loop up from the eye. We're gonna go between the last, the last two legs there. Pull a loop up from under that last leg. Pull a loop up from the stitch at the base of the last leg and advance two. So pull up a loop in the next two stitches. Yarn over and pull through all six loops. Chain one. I'm going to have our final star stitch of the row here. Advance two, and as you can see, advancing two takes us all the way to the end of the previous row. We're going to chain one. Now, as you can see, it's a little wonky. Um, I have what I call a half star stitch that is going to, it's basically a star stitch like we've just been doing except without advancing two because there's nowhere to advance two we're at the end of the row so we're just going to pull up a loop from the eye and from the last leg and from the stitch at the base of the last leg for four loops on our hook yarn over and pull through all four loops and as you can see that kind of straightens out and squares out our our row okay so now our next row is going to finish off the star stitch and we're going to use a row of single crochets to do that. So chain one and turn. Your first single crochet is going to go into the top of that half star stitch. Your next single crochet is going to go into the eye of the next star stitch. And now for the rest of the row, you're going to put two single crochets into the eye of each star stitch all the way across. And then when you get to the last one, you'll put a single crochet into the top of the star stitch. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, so we've got 
two in each eye, and we're not putting anything in the top of these center star stitches. We're just doing two single crochets, also known as a single crochet increase in the eye of each star stitch all the way across. Okay, so once again, I'm a little short on my row. I don't wanna end it right here. So I am going to single crochet a final time into the top of the star stitch at the end of the row. So now I'm finished with my star stitch rows. That's rows five and six. And I can, I'm sorry, it's rows six and seven rather. Um, so now we are going to do a row of half double crochet. So chain one and turn. And as you can see, the star stitch now completed. It looks like these little like starbursts or sunbursts, which are stars. So <laughs> I guess that's where it gets its name. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go ahead and do um, some more half double and single crochet third loop stuff. Okay. So this next row, row eight, will be a row of half double crochet. So just in each of the single crochets, just half double crochet into each of the single crochets all the way across your row. And at this point, you should still have 121 half double crochets. The thing you'll notice about those star stitches is because, um, you, you know, I mentioned that we advanced two. So they are worked in pairs. So your star stitch rows, you will have um, half the number of star stitches as you have total number of stitches. So if you've got 121 stitches here with our half double crochets, then that means we should have 60 star stitches and then one half star, okay? So our next row, is going to be a row of single crochet in the third loop for row number nine. So I'm going to chain one and turn. And again, we're going to work under that third loop from our half double crochet. Okay, and so for row 10, we are going to chain one and turn, and we're going to do, for 10 and 11, we're going to do half double and then single crochet third loop, and then for row 12, we're going to just do a half double crochet. So I will do those quickly here. Again, you're just working one stitch per stitch, no increases, nothing funny, so you should still have the same number of stitches at the end of each of these rows, 121 stitches if you're following the pattern. Working on row 11 here. And for row 12, chain one and turn. This is going to be the last row of our main color block. And then I'll show you how I like to change colors at the end of this row.
Okay, so I'm coming up on the end of row 12 here with the last, last which is the last row of my main color block. And I'm going to show you guys how I like to um, change colors at the end of a row. So before I work the final pull through of my last stitch, which normally I would go ahead and yarn over and pull through all three of these loops to finish my stitch. But before I do that, I'm actually going to go ahead and bring in my new yarn. I'm just going to kind of, you know, use my finger to make a loop. Make sure you're leaving yourself a nice long tail for weaving ends in later. That way they are nice and secure. And instead of yarning over with the old, uh, the main color yarn to, for my final pull through, I'm actually just going to grab that new loop or that loop of the new yarn and pull that through instead. Then I'll use my finger and kind of tighten this a little bit down. You don't want to pull it too tight because that'll mess with the look of your stitch but um, just tight enough to kind of secure it and then chain one so that you're ready to start the first row of block the contrasting color block I was going to say block B <laughs> that's what I have in my notes here <laughs> sorry um, so yeah so it's just a matter of pulling that final pull through uh, is the new yarn it's really simple and then at that point you can we, uh, drop your tails, cut your yarn, which let me go ahead and again, make sure you're leaving yourself a nice long tail for weaving in later. And our yarn is secure and we are ready to start the contrasting color block. So with row 13, it is a single crochet row. So I've chained one and I'm going to turn my work. Now, um, I'm going to leave my ends until the end to weave in, uh, mostly so I can make sure that I don't have any color leaks on the right side of my fabric, which is obviously this side with all the texture and the pretty star stitches. So I prefer to wait until the end to do it, also because I'm a pretty big procrastinator. <laughs> I don't like weaving in my ends. So first row of our contrasting color block for row 13 is a row of single crochet. So you're just going to single crochet in each of the half doubles from the previous row. And I want to point out that you are just doing regular uh, single crochet. You're not doing third loop single crochet. Notice how I am leaving that third loop down here. I'm working under the top V of the half double crochets just like a normal stitch nothing fancy here and as I reach the end of this first row of the contrasting color block you're going to chain one and turn and your next row is going to be single crochet as well so just go ahead and single crochet in each stitch across and again you should still have that same 121 number of stitches that has not changed And as we finish up row 14 here, we are ready to start some of this really fun texture. Um, I'm not sure if there's a name for it, but if you are familiar with my Emberly head warmer or ear warmer or headband pattern, um, I use the same stitch with that. I just love this bumpy texture. So uh, to start, you're going to chain one and turn your work. You will be working the bumps on the uh, you'll be working bump rows on the wrong side with the wrong side of your blanket facing you. So as you can see, there's no texture on this side. This is how I know this is the wrong side of my blanket. And I am going to start with a single crochet in the first stitch. And the next stitch is going to be a treble. So you're going to yarn over two times, insert your hook into the next stitch, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So it'll look a little wonky. And then you're going to follow that with another single crochet in the next stitch. And you have to make sure you don't, sometimes you might want to accidentally grab the top of that treble as you come up. So I keep snagging my hook on that. So you just be careful of that when, when you go to do it. But then it's just alternating 
um, treble and single and treble and single all the way across the row and ending with a single crochet. And what that's going to do is with the treble crochets being such a tall stitch and the single crochets being such a short stitch, it's going to make those trebles bend over and create that bumpy texture on the right side of our fabric without a whole lot of fuss. It's a pretty easy way to add texture and it's definitely one of my favorites. All right, so I will end with a single crochet in the last stitch. Ta-da! Now our um, next row is going to be row 16, is a double crochet row, so we're going to chain two and turn our work. And you can see those lovely bumpy texture. I love it. I just want to run my hands over it. And that's one of the reasons I really love this blanket for babies is because babies are such tactile creatures. <laughs> they love to touch and feel things. So for this double crochet row, we are just going to double crochet into each single and treble stitch all the way across our row. Pretty easy. Sorry if you can hear my dog in the background. <laughs> She's excited by all of the things only she can see in the, in the front yard, apparently. Okay, so we've got our final double crochet going into that last uh, single crochet from the previous row. So now we are going to work another one of these little bumpy texture rows. So chain one and turn. I'm going to get some more yarn. and then single crochet in the first stitch, treble crochet in the next, and again, just keep alternating those all the way across your row, ending with a single crochet in the final stitch of the row. I appear to have a tangle, so I'm going to fix that and I will meet you back here at the end of this row. Okay, so I have finished my little bumpy row here and I'm ready to work the final row of my contrasting color block, which is a row of half double crochet. So chain one and turn and you're going to work a half double crochet into each single crochet and treble crochet all the way across your row. And again, 121 stitches if you're following the pattern. That stitch count does not change. And one thing to note is that the uh, two blocks both end with a row of half double crochet. Um, it kind of helps me remember once I get into the repeat here. So again, I have just worked the contrasting color block and the main color block. Now if I was going to change colors um, then obviously I wouldn't have done that final pull through. I would just do my yarn over, insert my hook and pull up a loop and then I would just pull my main color back through it. Like so. And you can go back here and you can see there's a little bit more of a gap. So you can just kind of tighten things and pull that into shape. And then when you weave your wrens in, it will cinch all of that together and secure it better anyway. So that is how you work the two blocks. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop a comment below and I will answer as best as I can. Um, again, you can find this pattern for free on my blog and the paid versions are available in both my shops, the on Ravelry and on Etsy. And I will post the star stitch tutorial. All of those links will be in the description box below for you. 
so I found, I hope you found this helpful and I will catch you guys on the next video. Have a great day. Bye.